Hey, what's up everybody? My name is James. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this portrait in oil paint. First thing I'm going to do is show you how I prime the panels. So, I prefer to use wood panels. I start off by just taping the sides with some painter's tape, and then I sand them down and add a layer of gesso. I like to use Liquitex. I usually repeat adding a layer of gesso and sanding about three to four times. Sometimes I even sand down the wood panels if I'm not liking the painting and just start over. They're really fun to paint on. I definitely recommend trying them if you haven't tried it yet. For the sketch, I'm just using a cheap graphite pencil. Uh, charcoal has a better chemical reaction with the oil paint and it doesn't run the risk of having a glare through your painting. Uh, once I'm happy with the sketch, I just go ahead and take a fixative spray and spray the painting. Uh, make sure wearing a mask when you do it, it's kind of nasty. I'm going to go ahead and do a wash over it once when it's dried. I'm just going to use uh, some transparent red oxide. You could use pretty much any color. I recommend a brownish neutral or warmish color like raw umber or burnt umber. Cut the paint with a combination of linseed oil and uh, like turpentine or some kind of paint thinner. Once when I let the wash dry, afterwards I do a raw umber sketch. So I like to go over the whole drawing again uh, using just raw umber uh, to establish the drawing a bit more. When I'm sketching I try to keep in mind the direction that the form is going. In the self-portrait by Rembrandt you can see how his lines are following the contours of the face and the flow of the features. I'm trying to accomplish something similar here the best I can with my under sketch and it'll give me like a good guide later for uh, any kind of brushwork I'm going to lay down. I like to keep the paint pretty thin. Uh, if I make a mistake or something I don't like, I just wipe it away with a towel or a Q-tip. This stage, I do like to have kind of a thicker medium on the palette also uh, that I can occasionally dip my brush into to keep it sharp, like uh, the Lithwin uh, by Winsor Newton or the Impasto Gel uh, or some beeswax works really good also. When I'm working during this stage, I like to keep my reference black and white so I can focus on the values and just see what I'm doing a little bit better because I'm not really focusing on color right now I just want to try to lay out where all the lights are where all the darks are I might even kind of draw like circles or well not really circles but shapes around where I think the lights are going to be so like on her cheek on the right side I kind of drew like a box where I think that shadow is going to be or the highlights going to be on her right cheek and I just kind of do the same thing where I think there might be some more prominent highlights around the face. I'd like to apologize also because you might be seeing like the light flicker on and off here quite a bit. And I'm painting in kind of like my kitchen sort of. So it's a little bit hard for me to see uh, from the glare. So I'm turning on and off the light every once in a while just to see what it looks like under different lighting settings to see how my painting's going so I can look at it a little bit better. Some of the parts I'm even gonna just actually kind of block it in with raw umber a bit, like the eyebrows and maybe some places like under the chin and the lips and stuff like that and the side of the face, just to kind of give me a good base of values. I 
I'm really kind of focusing on big shapes here and finding like some unique shapes with like the hair and the shadows and the face. I do like to spend quite a bit of time on this stage. Uh, I feel that it kind of helps me once when I actually start painting to have this uh, raw and bruise sketch to, to work with as a good base. So after the raw umber sketch, I just kind of let it dry out and then I add a burnt umber wash to the painting, kind of masking it. This gives me a neutral value to work from so I could start finding out where the lights are of the painting, which is what I'm doing here. I'm just adding titanium white to where I think all the highlights are of the painting after the burnt umber wash dries. And I cut the paint again with, uh, you could use like beeswax or liquid or some kind of like thick, sticky type medium just to kind of cut it and add some volume to where you're laying down the paint. Uh, I like the Windsor Newton Impasto Gel. I think it works pretty good for doing this. And wherever the lightest areas are, I'm just painting a little bit thicker with titanium white. Um, I might do like one or two layers of this. Uh, I just kind of want to figure out where exactly all the lights are. It kind of creates like a cool, warm, cool contrast too with the background and gives it kind of some color variety already. So here I just blocked in the background really quick. I think I used some yellow ochre and raw umber and a little bit of viridian green. Just kind of give it like a good base. So here I'm just painting with a thin layer of raw umber and titanium white. I'm just using just those two colors. And I'm actually kind of bringing the values a little bit closer together when I'm doing this. I'm not pushing them a lot. And I want to kind of keep it thin. It kind of adds like a cool green layer for a base because the skin's kind of green in a lot of places. The further down you move from the face, it gets a little bit more green and desaturated. And I'll actually let this poke through quite a bit even after I start adding a lot of color to the painting. So I'm just masking in the hair now. I'm just using a combination of transparent red oxide and ultramarine blue, which makes kind of like a blackish brown color. I'm gonna use that color quite a bit. And now I'm blocking in the background. I like to use the palette knife a little bit to add some abstractions to it. I use titanium white, blizzard crimson, and ultramarine blue for the background. So it's kind of like a muted blue tone and I added just a little bit of yellow ochre to it. Once again, the black I'm using is that same transparent red oxide ultramarine blue combination. And then I'll add some white to it. So it kind of makes like a gray, like metal looking tone for armor. Once when the raw umber drawing is kind of done underneath of it, this is where I'll start blazing color on top of the painting. So I just make like a very neutral kind of flesh tone, just like a skin color. And I start with that as a base and then I just make it darker or lighter and just kind of go over the whole painting, uh, play with different hues of it and just place it wherever I think it fits best. So I let the painting rest for a while, um, kind of think about it and look at it for a while and think about what I want to really do to finish it up. Uh, once when it's totally dry, I like to oil it out before I paint on it again. And that's what I'm doing here. I just added some linseed oil went over the whole painting so I could see my value range a little bit better. And then I start painting again. Uh, this part's pretty vibes based. Some parts I leave alone if I like them. Other, I, other areas I like laser paint kind of thickly over it. Uh, usually in the shadows, it's going to be kind of thin and on the highlights, it'll be thicker because I want them to appear closer to you. 
So using a bit of impasto for the highlights, I feel like definitely helps that. Setting a few details here to the hair. Try to save these for last. Just uh, some final little highlights. Once I have the painting at a good stopping point, I let it touch dry. And then I could go ahead and begin varnishing it. It usually takes about a few weeks or a month for it to get kind of touch dry like that. Varnish can be pretty nasty, so I like to wear gloves when I apply it and one of these like squishy brushes. Uh, I found that less is more when applying varnish. I would even recommend just dipping the brush into kind of a tray and then using it, not pouring it on top of the painting. It seems to work best, but I didn't have a tray. And like I said, I'm kind of painting on a kitchen in the kitchen right now, so. I laid a trash bag down to make sure I don't make a mess anywhere. And this is the final painting. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please let me know. Peace.